previously during the investigation. Okay then, Zack. Let's pay Harry another visit and get to the bottom of all this. And that one. And that one too. All red seeds. Welcome, York. The killings 50 years ago. There is something about it that you won't find written in those files. The people were attacking and killing each other. Rampaging as though insane. Quite a story. York, I told you. It's nothing more than local folklore. What does that all mean? It's called the legend of the new raincoat killer. York, we found Thomas. Zack. Okay, so it's not bonus footage. It's still part of the main feature. Perpetrator is exactly who I thought it was. Come on, boy, or it'll be too late. 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 Come on, boy, or it'll be too late.
You are waiting here for someone, aren't you? The person you are waiting for will be here soon. We come toward the climax. As the angel said, I was soon fated to meet him. What do you think of those dreams, Zack? So I do care for Emily. What about you? We should take this opportunity and talk about this a bit. If I hadn't seen your come into the bar, well, you wouldn't have found this place, would you? Now, how about that? I guess I've always been lucky when luck was needed. That's why I've been able to stay in business, too. Although we have Willie to thank for finding this room, I suppose. He's got a great nose. Clever, too. He'd be a great businessman if he wanted to be. I owed you guys one anyway. And I owed York big time, too. You guys didn't tell anyone about that whole thing with Diane. I want to help you guys out. Is there anything I can do? Kason, I appreciate the offer. But this is a police matter. You can leave everything to us from here. Oh, well, okay. George, look. These cigarettes, they're the same brand that York smokes. He's definitely been here. Carol's been missing since the bar closed last night. This town will be deserted if this keeps up. What do you think is really happening here in Greenvale? Emily, let's focus on looking for York. I just hope there are more leads than a cigarette butt around here. Hey, Willie, of course! You can track his scent, can't you, boy? What do you think, officers? Let him help you out, why don't you? Oh, he'd make a fine police dog. I told you, we don't need... Sounds good, Kaysen. We need all the help we can get. Come on, George. Let's let them help us. But they are civilians. Do you have a better plan? As we speak, York might be... Ugh. Right. Let's have them help. Thank you, George. But one thing. With York missing in action, I'm back in charge. And York would give me hell if something bad happened to you guys. So promise me, you'll call for backup at the first sign of danger. Yes, of course. I think we're missing something here. So I'm going to look around a bit longer. You go with Kaysen and follow York's trail. Thank you, George. We're counting on you, boy. Welcome to the force, Deputy Willie. <laughs> Let's get rolling, then. Okay, I'm counting on you, Willie. Oh, not counting on me, though, are you? Sheesh.
Italia, testate sperimentate. He can be a little selfish, but he's a good dog. He stayed with me all this time, through all the good and the bad. How long have you been together? Oh, we go back a long time. I can't even remember a time when he wasn't around. I had a dog when I was small, too. He was a beagle, so we named him Bee. Stupid name, I know. He hated being left alone and always followed me around. I could tell him anything, even things I couldn't tell my parents. He'd look into my eyes and listen intently to anything I had to say. It's like he sympathized and he didn't make fun of me. He would just listen. When I was done talking, he'd put a paw on my thigh. My worries just faded away when he did that. Made me feel like I was just a fool for worrying so much. <laughs> Dogs are great that way. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think they got a lot more wisdom than us humans. Even if they are betrayed, they don't see it that way. Sure sounds foolish, but you know dogs, why they're always happy. I'm positive that even if man perishes off the face of the earth, dogs, why they'll just carry on, regardless. They see everything, you know. From their dog houses, they look out and they see what humans do. Kason. Oh look, Deputy Willie's calling for us. He's always like that. Let's get back to the chase. Why, thank you, York. You're so kind. Unlike him. If I had someone like you, things may not have come to this. York, have you ever been in love with someone? Thomas, a long time ago, I witnessed two people that I really cared about die. Both pretty much at the same time. And since then, Emily, right? She's a nice girl. But I must warn you, York. You'd be better off not falling in love with her. Thomas, considering the circumstances, whatever I say might not be important to you, but I'll say it anyways. Don't you dare touch Emily. York, I think I've said too much. It's natural to respond when someone talks to you, I guess. Everything will end tonight. You just stay there until then.
Well, what's wrong? Something is bothering you. Oh, no. It's just... I promised to have tea with, with Polly. I just... Yeah. What's that got to do with you? Yep, you're right. This just isn't the time, I know. But it's... Well, she reminds me of my mother who passed away. Kason. I've been a salesman for a long, long time. I never had time to talk with my mother, you know. Sales, they were the thing for me. No matter what happened, this was more important. So even when she was sick, I put more energy into my work, which I regret now. And you know, when I heard she died, I was, I was on my way home, all happy. I closed a big deal in Jersey. Just when you want to give something back, you got no one to give it back to. Well, that, that's when I met her, Polly. I thought heaven had given me another chance. I really did. So I always stay in that hotel whenever I come up here. Oh, sure, the rooms are great, but, but in all honesty, I go there because I want to talk with Polly. Does Polly know all this? No, no way. I'd never say anything so embarrassing to her. She'd think I've got some crazy mother complex or something. Right, let's get going. Deputy Willie disapproves of any chit-chat. I'll make it up to Polly some other time, I guess. It's only a hunch now, but I don't think Nick killed Diane. What do you mean? Me and Diane, we were, you know, pretty close. I'm sure some people might have moral issues about it all, but I'd like to think that I knew her pretty well. Every time we, we finished talking, she'd bring up art. I'd make a face, you know, boring. And she'd always say, you're so different from Nick. He's so much more intelligent. Sounds like something she'd say. Nick was one of the few people who she could talk to, you know. And vice versa for Nick, I suppose. Diane also told me that she was best friends with Nick. He had nothing at all to gain by killing her. But even the best of friends can end up in the worst fights. Still, the voices and footsteps I heard that night, they were something else. Much more violent, more, more horrifying. Different too. Different. Hard to explain. Of course, I, I couldn't make out what she was saying. You told your girls? Of course I did. What did he say? I, I know, that's fine. Something like that. <laughs> Let's go then and catch Diane's killer.
No. I mean, well, I always say hi when I see them at their store. Don't you think they make a wonderful family? I guess so. Including Jim, I suppose they do. <laughs> Indeed they do. The ideal family, I'd say. You know that I look after Isaac and Isaiah pretty often, right? They talk a lot when I take them out. Yesterday, Mama and Papa, <laughs> and this morning, Grandpa. Always about their family. Just listening to them makes me feel so happy. I don't have any brothers, you know. Maybe I'm a little jealous of those two. That's why when I come here, I always pay them a visit. Greenvale is really like a second home to me. I can tell. Deputy Will is calling again. Enough about me. Let's get going. Deputy Willie, he's over here. Come on, hurry. Willie, York is nearby. Good job, Willie. Can we stop running now, please? Hey, so we took the long route here. You weren't playing with us, were you? George, we found out where York is. George? Kason, I'm going in alone. Hey, hey, you didn't forget what George said. No, I haven't. And that's why you get to stay out here and keep trying to contact him. I'm just going to check things out. I'll stay out of danger. Trust me. Okay, if you say so. I'll take care of this here. Thank you. 
Emily is here. Time to say goodbye then. York, no situation is reversible. Didn't you know that? Everyone, everything proceeds along a path preordained by fate. Goodbye then. I wonder who'll be the next person to open this door. Well, whoever that person is will be the one to decide your
You sure took your time. <laughs> Thomas, you've got nowhere to run now. Just surrender yourself. Emily, I've been waiting for you. Where's York? Is he okay? <laughs> He's quite the handsome one, isn't he? I liked him the moment I saw him. He likes someone else, of course. Who do you think that is? Hmm? I'm asking you if he is okay. Answer me. Oh, yes. He is handsome. But me and Carol, we love not him, but a different person. My lovely G. Cut the crap. Do you know what you're doing? Why, yes. I do. All too well. Far better than you do, I think. You know nothing about yourself, nor this town. Please don't make me shoot you. <laughs> You're a silly, sad little woman. We're heading for devastation. All of us. And no one can stop it. <laughs> Oh, Thomas, you're sick, but there's still time. We can get you help. I'll help you. You're too kind, Emily. As kind as a goddess. That's why he likes you. This town is soiled, and only you are shining in it. That's right, Thomas. Let's just leave here together. It was so much better back then. We had so much fun. Emily, that was before you came. I won't let you have him!
it hurts. Thomas, don't make me shoot again. Surrender and turn yourself in. <laughs> Emily. Emily, I'm so... <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's enough, Thomas. Just come over here. <laughs> I don't believe. I don't believe I did. <laughs> I hate you so much! Die, you stinky swine! Stinky, stinky mutt! Get away! Get away from me! Get off! Hey! York! Are you okay? I'm fine. Got to spend some quality time with Zack. I heard gunshots. Did you get our man? York, Thomas is dead. I shot him. He tried to kill me. Thomas, I suppose that this is the fate you talked about. But Emily, what about the murderer? I just told you I had to shoot Thomas. Thomas's actions may have surprised you, I understand that. But our job is to catch the killer, isn't it? You didn't let the killer get away. York! Are you saying that Thomas was not responsible for the murders? What? 
That makes no sense. Emily, are you out of your mind? Thomas was certainly neck deep in this. But he didn't kill the girls. He has concrete alibis for all three murders. He also doesn't have the reverse peace symbol on his back. These are basic facts that for sure you haven't forgotten. Then who? I need you to be strong, Emily. If Thomas is not the killer, then there is only one other possibility. The only one with free access to the department files and doesn't have an alibi at the time of the killings. Love G himself. George? George is the killer? And since when did you start thinking this? I wasn't sure to start with, but you saw the pictures, right? In that secret room in Carol's bar. That was when I became 100% positive. But George didn't have the tattoo on his back. Ah, right. He doesn't have a tattoo on his back. But there is a pattern there. What do you mean? Emily, I'm not saying that the pattern was the tattoo. Remember what Harry said. There isn't a single thing that can maintain its shape for eternity. And George's back is a perfect example. Hey, you two. Could you explain this so I can understand what's going on? Emily, come in. Emily here. I've rescued Agent York from the clock tower. Thomas is dead. I was forced to shoot him. York is a little weak, but we're heading back to the department now. Okay. I'll be the same. Emily. George is a friend of yours, isn't he? Yes. Then what we are about to do is going to be tough to deal with. Are you willing to go through with this? York, I'm Deputy Sheriff. This might be a small town, but I take pride in that. It's my duty to make sure that we catch all the bad guys in Greenville. Even if it means facing an end that I would never have hoped for. Okay. Then let's get moving. This case is going to end with the Sheriff's Department. This is madness! Will, come on, let's go with it. Chickening out now would be like leaving after eating the appetizers. I'm going in from the front. You secure the back. Okay. What should I do? Kaysen, stay at the entrance. No, don't cut me out now. If this was a movie, I'd be some minor nameless character. And I thought I was the cheerful sidekick that helped solve the case.
Zack, I thought we might get a warm welcoming.
Carol, are you okay? George, George did this to you. Thomas, he's dead. I, I shot him. I, I had to. Jason, quick! Rush to the hospital. She needs a full stomach and liver cleansing. York, you need to come too. She needs... No, I have to take care of something here. But I can't take her alone. Please, Kaysen. Uh, okay, okay, I'll do it. Fast. But if something happens, don't blame me, okay? Just go! I haven't been this emotional in a long, long time. Can you tell Zach? <laughs> 